Alrighty then there. What's going on, people? What's going on on this steely Sunday afternoon? Welcome. Welcome to Guitar Sessions live on YouTube. Let me get stuff situated here. Just got to minimize this window. Let's see ya. There we are. Here we are. <laughs> Welcome. You got to have your shades on for Steely Sunday. I don't know if I'll be able to keep them on because I got to read and see what I'm doing, but welcome, welcome. It's a beautiful, steely Sunday afternoon here in the Treehouse Studio in Babylon, New York. I got the window cracked today. Can't be locked up in here. It's a beautiful breeze. So uh, I hope the nature sounds are okay. I mean, Rush recorded a farewell to Kings outside right so uh, I think we're good here thanks for hanging out you got your guitar in standard tuning you got a cool refreshing drink we're gonna be here a while talking about the great Steely Dan band and primarily the gentleman I gotta do it right. He's just here, Elliot Randall. He's the cat that laid down the solo on Reeling in the Years from this fine album right here. This fine album right here. Steely Dan's debut album, Can't Buy a Thrill. We'll just sit that right there. Let's talk a bit uh, here quickly where we've been in our first few lessons. Cheers. And make sure, let me know in the chat here. You gotta take off the spectacles now. Hey, <laughs> hey you. That was just for dramatic effect. Being dramatic for the Dan. Okay, let's turn you down. All we need to do is looky. Everybody, you can hear the mic, everything cool. Let me know how it sounds in the uh, chat here. If everything's cool and the sound is golden. Looks cool from my levels right here. You notice I moved the mic Got sick of bumping into it with the back of my neck, so it's right here on a shorter stand. We're mic'd up back here with the 57 on the Freedman. Everybody, you can hear the mic, everything cool. Okay. Thought I had you turned down. All right. So today, just going through the Texas Screamer by Big Joe Stomp Boxes into the Yngwie Malmsteen Fender Overdrive. Probably we don't need to tune, turn that on for this kind of tune. We're talking uh, that Johnny Winter Tube Screamer is the ticket. Hey, you guys in the chat, let me know the mic's cool. Let me know if the sound's cool. Then we're going into the uh, Boss Modified GE7 Equalizer. Modified by XTS in Nashville and into the TC Electronic Flashback 4 and into the Friedman. So that's the signal chain for today. Feel free and be sure in the chat, let's just get this out of the way. If you have any questions about anything we've covered so far, let's retrace our steps here on Guitar Lesson Sessions Live. Started out week one with some Gary Moore, right? Exploring the style of Gary, primarily focusing on that beginning solo of End of the World. There's a lot of cool Gary Moore-isms in there, a lot of cool Gary habits. So that was week one. 
Someone mentioned a question about bending and we can warm up with some bends. I see your question there. And uh, that's a good way to get warmed up. But I did cover some bending stuff in that lesson. And I do a bit of, about bends and vibrato on every lesson. But I will focus in on that for you today and a little more in future lessons. Second lesson, we did Eddie Van Halen Explored, right? Covered Spanish fly note for note. And uh, several other Van Halen tracks and solos, Women in Love, On Fire. What else did I do? A little Hear About It Later. Bunch of stuff in that lesson. So go check the Eddie Van Halen lesson. Because besides just focusing on the players, I'm giving you various performance tips uh, to help you not only perform the uh, musical excerpts that we're sharing, but hopefully will help your playing all the way around, make you an all the way around more well-rounded player. Week three... We got Viking on your ass with some Ingve Malmsteen Explored. Did a bunch of Ingve stuff. Some cool gypsy scales, harmonic minors, Phrygian dominant. Went over everything from some Baroque finger picking of the intro Black Star to Bigfoot solo in its entirety, Jet to Jet, Too Drunk to Live, Island in the Sun, bunch of Ingve. And that video kind of went viral. That got picked up by a few uh, online magazines. Thanks for all your positive feedback. And uh, next lesson, which was last week, was George Benson picking. And although it was called the George Benson, and I hope this didn't uh, throw any people, although it said George Benson picking, if you check the lesson, you know that other cats use this picking style, including Santana, Mr. Carlos Santana, Neil Sean, John Sykes is a great proponent to watch. Obviously, yours truly. If you gave a, a donation last week for the Benson, or you give one this week, and I'll tell you the links to donate. I sent you a packet of Benson, uh, we called it the Benson Files, and showed even some other players close-ups on their hand. You know, Ingve's hand looking pretty close for the most part. Several players you can watch right there. There's some right hands to, uh, to witness, but that's a very valuable lesson because, again, we weren't focusing specifically on the licks of George Benson, although I did give a couple. We're, we were more focusing on the ultimate picking technique and the way to make your right hand free-flowing and effortless, relaxed and stress-free. That's what last week was all about. Gave you a lot of cool licks. Started talking about remapping the revolutionary remapping of the pentatonic shapes. And today, got the clipboard. We're gonna talk about Steely Dan, focusing primarily on a track from this album called Reeling in the Years. We're going to go through that entire song. There's a lot of leads. Jimmy Page from Led Zeppelin says this is his favorite guitar solo of all time, hands down, period. And I can see I can see why. First of all, song when a song moves at this kind of rapid tempo, even though it's like a, you know, jazz, rock, pop kind of uh, toned down mambo, uh, you know, with lyrics about a compulsive loser. <laughs> to, perf to perform this song in all the rhythms, all the licks, all the leads that fast, it's, it's a challenge. And I think this is a great 
This is going to be a great workshop for all styles of players, even if you're a metal dude. Come on, metal dudes, mellow out for a week. I mean, there's nothing like Steely Dan, you know. When I'm playing, you know, intense music all week and working on tracks like Monsoon and In the Flesh and my original music in my own style that has a lot of notes, very, you know, amplified and... The last thing I want to do when I'm done doing that is listen to more music that's that's like that or more intense. I want to listen to some music that's going to kind of let me get away from, you know, the intensity of so many shreddy notes, even though there's virtuosity ra running rampant all over the Steely Dan albums, you know, some of the best musicianship ever captured on record but again when i'm reaching for listening music i'm reaching for steely dan probably most often these days i'm telling you if you're in your 20s or 30s and i remember my buddy when i was in my teens when my buddy first showed me the royal scam album and i didn't really get the dan back then I was maybe a little too young and too focused in like UFO and Montrose and and early Zeppelin and yes but then as I grew up and the more I heard the more I got into this band and sitting where I am today this is a band that I'll reach for very often Bob Marley is another great example of some music after you've been shredding all day and working on you know very difficult stuff working on Bach licks you know Go listen to some cool, chillaxy music that still has the musicianship, but maybe clear production, very cool, groovy lyrics. Some of the coolest storytelling lyrics of any band. You know, just, just put on this album, this first album. I mean, there's not a bad track on the record. I mean, Kings, amazing. Just so many, so many killer tunes on this record. Do it again. Of course, reeling, fire in the hole, Brooklyn, change of the guard. Midnight Cruiser, that's a killer. And dirty work. Every tune's a killer. I mean, this is what you call a perfect debut album by a band and again the first few lessons that we covered Gary Moore into the world shreddy shreddy Eddie Van Halen lesson Spanish fly one of his trickiest and we showed a bunch of stuff very tricky as well Ingve, total virtuosic uh, level playing in that lesson of course, the Benson technique, that's gonna take you again, maybe a couple few months to get your picking turned around and really get that honed in. But those videos are there, all the lessons are there. We wanna give today maybe an opportunity to look more at the encompassing of a full song, an entire composition. Maybe talk about guitar layering and the, you know, the genius of this band and how they layered their guitars. Of course, they had many great guitar players. I could do a lesson on Elliot Randall. I could do a lesson on Jeff Skunk Baxter. I could definitely do a lesson on Larry Carlton. You know, just go check out his solo on Kid Charlemagne. You know, so many great Steely Dan albums I want to recommend, not just Can't Buy a Thrill, but FM. That's a perfect record. That was a perfectly expensive record, but what an amazing, album just check the track asia for everything from the guitar to the drums the royal scam is an amazing album katie lied an amazing steely dan album i hope uh today if steely dan's been an, a band that's on your vantage and you're kind of into him you'll be way more into him and if you weren't really that into him you're definitely going to give him a give him a chance and 
check them out further. I mean, if you're taking your lady out on a date on a Friday or Saturday night, you're not cranking Slayer in the car. At least if you if you want to come off cool and, and have a lucky evening, I'd say some Steely Dan might set you right. You know, a little Steely Dan and Margarita. Some fine Colombian, as Donald Fagan sings. So what can I tell you about this, this album and our show and tell? We always open the show, let people come in with a little show and tell before we start playing. Get your guitars tuned up, relax in, get your drinks. This album was released in the premier time for music, in my humble opinion, the 70s. Dropped November of 1972 on ABC Records. Was produced by Gary Katz and written most of the songs were Donald Fagan. I think Walter Becker has songwriting credit on one tune. And it was tracked at Village Recorders in uh, California. I'm familiar with that studio. Reeling in the Years, which we're going to look at today, was the second single featuring jazzy... You know, kind of jazz rock fusion solos and harmonies again it's kind of a toned down mambo is the rhythm just a killer tune in Elliot just a perfect solo here's some some interesting notes that I came across in my research of uh, Elliot in this track for our uh, workshop today his Guitar was performed in one continuous take, right? Again, I told you Jimmy Page's favorite solo of all time, Guitar World Magazine, 40th greatest solo of all time, Q Magazine, 95 on their 100 greatest guitar uh, riff tracks. There's a quad mix, a quadraphonic mix of Reeling in the Years where you'll hear even more of Elliot's uh, guitar improvisations than you hear on the stereo mix that's on the record. So you might want to hunt that down just for fun and frolic. He used his favorite Strat, and I thought about using my favorite Strat here today, but if you heard the lesson last week, you know, jazz on a dime, the Benson lesson, and this guitar <laughs> is just sounding too good. So we're using the Dean... Dime from Hell <laughs> for uh, a band that plays some uh, rock jazz fusion from Hell, right? He used his favorite Strat into an Ampeg SVT amp. This is his famous Elliott Randall setup using one AKG 414 mic on his cabinet. So that's all, that's all she wrote. That's all she wrote. For uh, reeling in the years, right? It's checking in the chat real quick. Just make sure everything's cool, guys. Did you let me know if the levels are cool? Farewell to Kings, your favorite Rush album? Cool. I was thinking I could do a Alex Lifeson, you know, explored. I know a lot of Rush licks. Just checking everybody. Okay, so I perform Reeling in the Years in my live show. I actually got to perform it one time, one time this year. I just started performing live and I just started singing lead vocals. Uh, if you've ever worked with a lead singer, you know why I might have ventured out on that uh, on that jaunt. <laughs> but I got to do one gig on my Have Guitars Will Travel this year. And I performed this song once. I could post the video after so you can see me performing all the juggling foot pedals, singing for the first time and playing guitar. I'd give it like I was, I think there might be one or two little glitches or something but no mistakes it came off really good for a first show and it would only get better it's already there's an older version the very first time I ever performed it live in my life 
uh, Jeff Young and Sherry live in Sedona, Arizona. You can check that version out and maybe I'll post uh, my recent version here after the lesson today so you can see the whole thing performed up to speed. Of course, in our lessons as I always go over and watching other lessons on YouTube and the reason I wanted to document this lesson is because when I learned the song, I went looking on YouTube for somebody, maybe save me some time and, you know, not many comprehensive lessons really detailed on how to play this tune. So not only for you guys today and folks who are following this lesson series, but for folks who may find this video in the future, or a month, a year from now, who are just steely dance who would like to play the song for fun for fun or for f frolic in their cover band in their hometown or whatever this lesson will be there for them and that's a good thing right likewise with the Ingve and the eddie all these lessons that i'm posting not necessarily stuff that i'd get into in my skype lessons with you and i want to mention that up front before we get going if you are interested in private lessons where we can dive deeper into really looking at your technique and helping you bring all those aspects and fine tune a lesson program just for you, write me at jeffyoungmusic at gmx.com and I'll send you all the details. Prices are really reasonable. And uh, I teach people all over the planet, all levels, most styles. I don't have any folks into polkas, but uh, most every other style I, I do teach. Also, you'll see right up here, if you want to donate and help out for the lesson, and I always send goodies after lesson. Anyone that donates, you'll get some handouts and goodies emailed to you via WeTransfer, a whole little packet. Five bucks, 10 bucks, 20 bucks, whatever you can kick in. PayPal.me slash JY Music or Kofi.com, which is KO-FI.com slash JYGTR. And that's very much appreciated. We're all working musicians out here trying to find a new way to work in this new normal, this new Abbey normal. So because we had a question in the chat that I saw just as I was logging on and I want to, I want to tend to you guys and, you know, help you in any way I can. And again, we have all level players and all these lessons, every lesson is designed for every level player, right? Double check the tune, you should be good. Got the Floyd lock today. But we always start maybe a little gradual and work up. If you saw any of the last lessons, you know, I don't know what's, I'm not sh quite sure what some folks think guitar lessons are about, but it's not about going sitting down with a guy and watching him just shred his nuts off and you don't learn anything. I've got a whole YouTube channel full of me blowing licks, playing all kinds of conceivable styles from originals, covers, and remakes. I have my solo album, Equilibrium, easy to find. Monsoon, my new single in the flesh. These lessons are to help you, help me, help you. <laughs> this is our Jerry Maguire moment. So at the beginning, there is always a lot of talking and the more we go, the more noodling we do. But what I'm trying to impart in these lessons, and please go back and check all the previous lessons because I'm imparting things that came from many different teachers. It's an amalgamation of what I've learned from the best teachers that I've studied with in my travels all over the planet. 
in all my years. And uh, many of these things, I don't hear many, many teachers uh, sharing with their students. I, I'm not sure. I see some pro players. Uh, I'm not sure they really want you to figure out how to do what they're doing. They don't really slow their licks down that slow, show you their picking and exactly what they're doing. But that's the way I teach. You know, that's the way I taught at GIT when I was teaching, you know, 8, 10, 12 students each and every day, an hour a student, like, you know, a conveyor belt through my lesson room. And I find, again, there's a lot of things about guitar that I covered in these previous lessons that a lot of people take for granted, never learn in their lifetime, and therefore never get the full potential out of the instrument. So please, be patient with me, be patient with yourself, because there's a method to every detail that I show in each lesson. So go back and go through each lesson, try to extract the essence of what I'm trying to show, whether it's about technique. Roger Fisher always said your plane should have these qualities. He, he called the formula mast. And speaking of Roger Fisher, the original lead guitarist from the legendary band Heart, he had a formula, and I still remember it to this day. Again, these little simple things that maybe you never hear unless you have one person pass you that little tidbit. He called it MAST, M-A-S-T. That means that in his playing, in his solos, in his songwriting, in everything that he communicates through his instruments, he wants to make sure that it has these elements, meaning, accuracy, articulation, sensitivity, and technique. Meaning, accuracy, sensitivity, technique. And that's what we're talking about in each of these lessons using, be it an artist or a style of music, or a song that we're exploring to really dive down and see what, what the essence of the most relaxed, appropriate guitar playing is. So with that being said, let's dive into, by request in the chat, he wants to know about some bends, and I, I covered this, and this is my favorite tricky and it's the fastest way to get your bend sounding really uh, ferocious is the word. Articulation, that uh, second word in, in our little mast formula. So here's my uh, clean sound. I'm on a clean sound, right? Let's just come up here to the key of B, just as a warm up. We're just getting warmed up, okay? Now, you're asking about bends, and I'm on the guitar with the heaviest, stiffest strings. I'm looking over at my, my ingbe with the scalp neck. I want to grab, but it's actually great to practice this. This guitar for me is like swinging two baseball bats or three bats, and then you, then you, uh, I have it set up with the 10 through 46, so it's a little higher than my Ingve has 8 through 46. And we've talked about all that in previous lessons, so you can uh, go back and find more details about that. But what we're going to do here is soup up an old blues lick and work on our bending. Okay, Again, bending is a lot, it's an ear thing, so we can talk about bending we can talk about vibrato, but this is this is this technique where it's a feel thing, where you really got to feel it and you got to earball it and you, then you got to own it, right? And it's all about really tuning your ear to know that you're bending right in pitch because you could bend a quarter step. You could bend a full step or a step and a half, right? You have your options. 
but let's just take this lick. This is one of the first licks I love to get my students. It gets their right hand, their left hand in order. It's a struggle for everyone at first. When I show you the beginning lick, you'll be like, oh, okay, that's pretty easy. But then when we add the picking to it, it gets a lot harder and a lot cooler real fast. So with a clean sound, first off, what we're going to do, this is just a nice warm up to get your hands. And this is something you should do every day, warming up a great morning or backstage before your gig. And we'll totally blow this out on all strings because we want to practice this kind of stuff on every string. And this is cool because there's some really cool bends in the Steely Dan tune. Elliot Randall has some nice bends and vibrato. Holds a note in midair, lets it just fall before he adds the vibrato, some really cool vibes. So let's warm up with this. We're gonna just take on the G string at the ninth fret, we're just gonna bend it up like this. You've heard the Almond Brothers, you've heard so many people, Randy Rhodes, Gary Moore, so many people do a lick similar to this where it goes. Okay where you're bending up and coming down. Just a downstroke. You can sweep across a little brush or pick like a paintbrush across the canvas. And pull off to your first finger. D string up or if you've seen the previous lessons push yank push right so we're pushing that in push yank push okay now that's the basic kind of old-fashioned lick old-school way to approach it if we want to get a little more aggressiveness a little more fiery if we want to unleash the fury on this. Why don't we add some extra pick attack, give it a more articulation, make it a bit more aggressive by, we're going to pick it exactly like we did, but when we bend it up, we're going to pick that note and then release it and pick it again. of attack, right? Right? Okay, that's the Johnny Winger. Here's the end of See how nice it gives you more of that kind of Zack Wild. Instead of get me, right now, do it on every string. Come to your B string with your fourth finger. This is where, again, remember Dimebag had a really nice vibe with his fourth finger. I see a lot of my students pretty lazy with that fourth finger. It's the same thing, but you're gonna go. But pick it down, up, down, up, down. High E string. Right? Down 
down low. Now you're going to pull down instead of pushing up. Right? five and six. All right, so you can come all the way across. That's what you should be practicing to get your left hand bending. more bending and stuff like that in the blues lesson all right we're gonna do a whole bluesy you know old school and new school kind of blues souped up blues lesson does that help in the chat with the Ben does that help I hope that helps because that's the vibe man that's the vibe so just, again, take that on every string. And again, it's your, you can decide, do you want to bend this up a half step to give you that more blues? Just, or do you want to go? difference between the, the whole step and the half step and you got to get used to that and then just take it all the way across and again with a clean sound so you know that you're not wanking and you uh, glitching out anywhere sense so there's a great little bending lesson to give your bends that fury that furiosity right one more time at full, uh, full volume it's in the key like this over like a B minor 7 or something My favorite things. These are a few of my favorite things. Which sounds better for that? Better. They're both good, see? That's one's the Ang and one's the Johnny Winner. Alright, so let's start out with this reeling in the years tune. Everybody's heard it. We all know the tune. So I'm going to walk you through the licks and talk about what makes each lick so cool and maybe how you can use these kind of ideas in your own soloing. Jimmy Page's favorite guitar solo of all time right now, ladies and gentlemen. Here we go. <laughs> all right. So someone mentioned I saw... I'll, I'll tell, talk about, I'm going to do a question and answer YouTube live like a workshop. So if you have any questions, 
Leave it in the chat, in the comments, write me later. Any questions that I've got for all the lessons from the first week, I'm going to answer them in one full blown. Your questions answered by me coming soon on uh, Guitar Lesson Sessions Live. But let's start this Steely Dan tune. Let's get cool. Let's get cool with the Dan. Can I have a sip of my drink before we go? Again, this solo is all about feel and note choice and timing. Timing, where licks fall in the measure. On any beat, you can put a note in three different places. You can play that note right on the beat, right hard on the beat. You could play that a little ahead of the beat, a little rushed, making it feel like the the music's falling forward a little bit, a little bit excited. Or you can pull it on the back side of the beat, which is like the old John Bonham, Billy Gibbons trick, right? The playing on the back side of the beat. So there's a lot of that kind of feel in this solo, and we'll talk about that as we go. But we'll get the notes. I'll do it clean, play some of the stuff dirty so you can hear. Again, I'll upload the performance. There's already a full performance on my YouTube channel. Let's get reeling in the years, people. All right, so we're gonna start in fifth position, right? First note of the tune, when they come in, it hits in, we're talking about G major. to an A, kind of like an A sus. So that's the essence of the notes in the chorus. Right. So, first little lick, and we talked about it last week in the George Benson. I gave you a really cool way to play the chromatic scale, right? We're gonna play some chromatic right now. Not a full chromatic, just three notes starting right here. At the seventh fret on the B string, we're gonna do a three note motif where we pull down, we pick, we go. And it's gotta be really snappy. This is actually kind of tricky right here from the get go to get that really clear on the B because it just comes in one. Like that. So practice getting that separation. And he comes right back up. And he's going to slide up to the second, seventh fret. Okay. A little bit like that, right? Right? And this guitar is great. That's why I was using this. Like, the notes really come out on this Dean. It sounds cool on the Strat, and that's what you'll hear me do uh, play it in the video, the live video performance. But 
the, uh, the old one's a telly. But on this guitar, you really hear it. And the idea is just the velocity you pull off. You don't, nothing hard, just really snappy on the pull-offs. Triple it, triple it. And he goes, little, little harmonic on the B string. And a little cool half bend right there, talking about Ben's buddy in the chat. A little vibrato right there. Slight bend. And there's a little clever Elliot Randallism, how he comes from the little blues bend on the G string fifth fret down to that note at the seventh fret. Slide up seven to nine on the A string to the seven on the D string. Nine, then a little hammer on it, pull off here. He does that twice. Then he goes a nice Hendrixy double stop right here. right here. Right? You're barring at the seventh fret and just add your third finger on the A string only, but leaving your first finger at the seventh fret so you get that minor third interval. Remember we talked about the minor third? What child is this? So, to a perfect fourth right there. So in slow motion. down with the pick, you fear? Here he goes. D to D flat, five to four on the fifth string. F sharp to E. Second fret open. That's again so rapid fire how this is playing out. The licks so cool. A wide distance on the licks, very creative intervals, very melodic. Stay in your brain kind of melody, right? See what he does right there. So cool. F E A open A. fire right there. Right?
okay? So we're gonna start with the... Just take that little lick right there. stop right here at 7 on the G string in high E, 12th fret on the G string to the 10th fret, right, right, just like that, so cool. Now he comes up here and slides with a single pick stroke all then he doubles it up we're going 15 14 14 12 to 10 to 9 Then he starts doubling up, right? See how he doubles up right there? He goes all full whole steps. Nine to seven, seven to five. Such a cool little trick to do on a one note lick like that. Single picking for the beginning then doubling it up to build that excitement. between clever and stupid, and I'd say Elliot Randall's well over on the clever side of the line, right? So, that's so cool, open. That's how you write a hook, a guitar solo that stays in people's heads for, what year is it now? 2020, this song was released in 1972, right? So that's the essence of that. So that's the intro solo to Reeling in the Years, right? Now, let's look at the verse, shall we? If I was to track this, I'd do it two ways. First, let's just look at the basic octaves, then I'll give you more kind of like the keyboard chords. You're just playing B octave, D flat octave, D octave. To an A. You have a last in summer, you can see it fading fast. So you grab a piece of something that you think is going to last But you wouldn't even know it, darling, if you had it in your hand 
see how clever the vocal is over these octaves. You, you can feel it's a very, Donald Fagan wrote this, it's a very piano feel of how comping chords like a pianist would do along with the cool vocals, right? You have a lesson summer, you can see it fading fast. Grab a piece of something that you think is gonna last. But you wouldn't even know it, darling, if you had it in your hand. The things you think are precious, I can't understand. Right? So that's the verse. D, D flat, B, A. Then a chromatic right here. E, F sharp, G. F sharp, F, then back. Are you wheeling in the years? And then to your G. Let's look at how the kind of how the chords would be kind of more of a keyboard. So I would do that on one track of guitar. Then I'd probably do this on another track. Like a D bar chord. Like an A with a D flat in the bass. Right? First finger, second fret. Third finger, fourth fret. First finger barring, second fret. Beautiful chord. Second finger on the uh, third B string. First finger, second fret. D major. up here the same chord is here but played in the this position how about this chord Where? how about your Hendrix chord right there Cheap trick chord, right? First note at your fourth fret A string, fourth finger on your seventh fret D string, third finger G string, sixth fret, second finger, fifth fret B, your bar there. So it's beautiful. Sorry. with the jazz hands jazz on a dime people hear how killer it sounds on this guitar man never judge a book by its cover this guitar is great for blues jazz country so let's do that progression in slow motion again first you could do the octaves imagine how cool this would sound double tracked right <laughs> top of that right beauty 
Then they go into the chorus. Now check it out. If I was going to track this and what I'm hearing on the track is first you got this kind of bluesy and in honor of little Richard, rest in peace my man, this old kind of Chuck Berry Rolling Stones. So that'd be one guitar to give it that really, that's going to give it the motion that your walking motion. And a lot of guys play that with the third finger for, you know, down low this for me, because I want to stretch up here. So imagine if that's going on in the background, you're going. Get me? You can get more sassy on it, right? Towards the end, you wouldn't want to do that in the first chorus, but as like as the chorus progressions build, right? And right there, it's just I'm giving it. It's a real nice. I love that song by uh, Boz Skaggs, Lido Shuffle. It's got that same kind of feel, right? Lido. It's that same kind of driving, good driving music when you're going to the beach with your babe, like I told you. So you're just going. Hammer with the first finger and get that open G note. Then I go to the open D. Like Beatles, how many old Beatles songs had that kind of vibe? You say, you could say, you say you want a revolution, right? Right? So the next look he does on the guitar, they repeat that chorus, right? Then he comes in with this look. Right? And again with the, we talked a lot about that in the Ingve lesson, right? And the Vetti, Eddie Van, the Vetti Ed Halen lesson. That pick sweeping. So you're coming down, down up at the 19th. And then jumping the strings, so 19, 15, 16. All right, then he goes. And more double stops. Right here, 12 to 14, back to 12. Then he goes. Killer lick going back into that second verse. And again, you got to listen how all this stuff sits in the music from the beginning to the end and try to play it. Once you get the licks, you try to play it from beginning to end flawlessly and good luck with that. Right? So it goes. Back 
back into the verse again, right? You've been telling me a genius since you were 17. And all the time I've known you, I still don't know what you mean. The weekend at the college didn't turn out like you planned. The things that pass for knowledge, I can't understand. And that's for friggin' real, man. That line right there, how timeless and appropriate today in the world we're living in, in this kooky, crazy world right now. The things that pass for knowledge, I can't understand. Genius lyrics, tip of the hat to Mr. Fagan on that one. So they go back into the chorus after that, right? And you see how cool, man, those two parts. Like maybe you go, okay, that's so basic, dude. It is, first of all, to get that feel in that pump, it, there's an art to that, so really work on that. But you got that pump and guitar line, then you put this over the top of it. It's just the bomb how those two work like pistons together, right? So then when they come in, after they do it again, then the next licks he comes in, right? He's gonna come in with some more kind of country. Fourth fret to third fret on the first string, G string to E string. Seventh fret right here. I do that part leading in to this cool breakdown. And now we get to practice our upstrokes that we've been talking about and working on the past weeks, right, people? Because the only way to play this lick properly, bitchy, cool little hooky lick that you'll never forget. Right? Killer lick, but check it. You got to start with an upstroke. This is what I've been building you guys up to because most cats only feel comfortable starting with the downstroke. But check this, you gotta go up, down, E, F sharp, G. And you can hear his note is an open string and you gotta get used to this muting. This is another great tricky little technique you can incorporate in your playing. Eddie is great at doing this. You gotta, and then put your hand down and palm mute it. Right? And you gotta do upstroke, up. So you end on a downstroke, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, up, down, up, palm mute, down. If you start doing that, you see, just doing that seemingly simple lick, it's not that simple. So you're just doing two, four, open, open. Two time times, two time times, then you go. Like that, two times on that. Dun, dun. And you go four two. So it's two three two two five two two. Then 
you go. That's killer, right? Now the harmony right here. Then he goes. And then he goes into the solo. And here we go, right up here. And that's where he bends and just holds it. It's like you're dangling someone over a cliff. You don't want to put the vibrato on it till the very last second. It's just like. Then at the very end, just give a little shake. I Ben, I it sounds like he's gonna like that. You can play it two ways, you can either go and bend at the 12th fret up or, or slide. It sounds like he's sliding right there, so he goes. Really fast, that fast. Killer little look right there. Kind of like the beginning of the song down here. Chromatic killer chromatic right there. He gets that dissonance right there as he slides up. You hear that? Let me go into that. It's tricky to kind of go into. Right? Killer solo by Elliot Randall. Let's look at it one more time in slow motion. So we got bend, shake at the last minute, then. You could go out for a bite 
And you'd still be here in that one, eh? Big Joe Stomp Boxes. Johnny Wano, Texas Screamer. It's a killer unit, people. Right? Then they go back into the third verse, right? The last verse where he's like, uh, The trip to Hollywood was etched upon my mind. The first line's escaping me right now for some reason. The trip we made to Hollywood is etched upon my mind. After all the things we've done, said you found another man. The things that that's Right? And again, those the more piano chords. Chorus reeling in me as he goes. So that's just nine seven. Then he comes up to the G string. Eight, ten to eight, and now this killer lick that's all timing, man, and just genius. He goes. Right? So that's that lick. <clears throat> so killer. It's from here. about how he plays this we were talking about on the beat and behind the beat listen to the track the way he's throwing this in where he goes then he starts pushing the rest where he, it's almost on top of me where he's and those notes are right here at the seven Then six, five, four, three. Right here at the fifth fret. Right? 
There it is. Killer licks from Elliot Randall, people. Come on, people. Are you playing that? You see this kind of shit? To have that groove and the ease of feel. Pulls all the way down, like that. Just like Van Halen in Hot for Teacher. Right, right here. And then the second time he stops here. Sorry. Then he goes. That's the lick right there. It's a very timing thing. Again, this is feel. P playing with feel. He goes. Right? doubling it up. That kind of stuff is great working. <laughs> Does that make sense, people? Does that make sense, my amigos? Let's talk to you in the chat. Talk to me in the chat. You enjoying this lesson, people? I see you're all paying attention. Paying close attention. I like the I like your screen names, people. One guy's I love heavy metal is his name. No, I love heavy metal rules. The other guy's name is Mind Your Business. I like that. John Montoya. So cool people. We just, this is like, uh, like an hour and a half lesson. I think that's a good lesson. Don't want to always overwhelm you. Some of our lessons have been going like three hours, three hours and change, three hours and change, but work this lesson. Go listen to some Steely Dan, please. Highly recommend starting with their first album can't buy a thrill also royal scam pretzel logic katie lied asia they build up to a perfect album with asia wait we got to put on our our steely dan glasses there we go all right now we're talking even check out Donald Fagan's solo material. Very, very cool stuff. Can't say enough about it. Now then, I'm thinking about what I want to do next week. I'm either going to do... I could do... You tell me in the chat what you want next. I could do like... The countryside of Buckethead, 
some sick country licks, some of that fastest, hardest licks that I've learned are country licks. And we could do a little bucket head action or we could do Morse code, Steve Morse. I got this killer string jumping triplet picking thing that'll own you. It's uh, Steve Morse said, if he can play this, he can play anything in his show. It's a great, that's like a full lesson there with a couple other things to go with it. So there's a Buckethead one in your future. There's a Steve Morse Morse code. We can do a whole lesson on like blues styling and really diving deep in the blues. Uh, the style of Steve Hunter, my, my teacher also taught Jason Becker right before he did the David Lee Roth album. Uh, they got him uh, with Steve Hunter. That's, we were both studying with him at the same time. I might have told that story in the Van Halen uh, lesson explored. What else do I got? Blues. I got a few, but that's one. Those are those are three that I'm thinking could be real, real cool for the near future. So tell me what you want. If you got any questions about any of the lessons so far. Leave them in the chat. Leave them in a private message for me. Email me at jeffyoungmusic at gmx.com. Right? I'm going to do a whole show just answering your guitar questions. So we'll just kind of cover the map of all different things. It could be about pedals. It could be about getting a sound. It could be about left hand technique, right hand technique, licks, the Megadeth solo stuff. Is going to be pay-per-view. I'm going to teach you guys how to do hook and mouth in one pay-per-view lesson in my darkest hour in another and set the world afire in another and uh, maybe some highlights from the other other songs uh, Mary Jane 502 liar that kind of stuff sound like fun that stuff's coming in the future but the Hendrix should I had to dress up just a just a spiffy bit today. You see the vest. I mean, Steely Dan. You gotta be. You gotta have some class when you're talking about the Dan. So uh, keep it classy out there, people. Crank some Dan on a Sunday. Get out there and enjoy this beautiful weather. That's what I'm gonna do. Probably gonna play some more guitar too later, and uh, watch a happening, happening flick. Enjoy, people. We'll see you next week for another installment of Guitar Lesson Sessions Live. I'm your host, Jeff Young. And it's been my pleasure to serve you, serve up the delicious licks for you. I'm going to grab my mouse. I'm going to disengage, bid you a fond adieu. Avoir, avir zain. Keep it cool out there, people. Keep it cool for the Dan. Stay tuned. Stay on beat. And practice well, my friends. Practice well. I'll see you next time with another cool lesson, I promise you. This is where we end the stream where I click end stream.